Okay, take a look at a puzzle. See where we're going with this. This is find the best move for black. And as usual, we're going to have a look at the ratings of these. It's uh, 2,500, both players 2,500. It's a three minute blitz game. And the rating is hidden until after we've had a look at the solution. Well, not the solution, basically trying to solve it. Right, to find the best move for black. King is here. Doesn't look like there's any checks on apart from this doing this. That doesn't look like it's going to cause them any trouble doing that. Have a free rook in a sense. Knight can take the pawn. Is it one of those? Uh, oh no, the knight can't because the bishop's got an x-ray through. So the bishop can take the pawn. Because if the pawn takes, they get the rook for free. And then it also is on the knight as well. That's the simple type thing. But he doesn't have to take. Not forced to take. Take. Yeah, he doesn't have to take. So it's not really forcing. If he doesn't take, we just move the bishop back. Oh, in fact, sorry. If he doesn't take, then we'll take the knight with a check and then we'll lose the rook from the smaller piece. So there's pluses there. So in essence, I think they lose something. So I, I believe it's taken here and then we're just taking the rook. Yeah, okay. And the rating for this puzzle, 1324. It's really falling in line with the exercises we've done previously about, you know, looking at the level of play. Yes, it's a three minute game, but it's still showing that these 2,500 players <clears throat> are finding simple solutions. This is a 1,300 rated puzzle. Turn and do. Let's just attack the pawn in the centre as we do. Oh, we don't like this sort of opening, do we? We tend to overthink the situation. We could take the pawn, but it's poison. Um, combinations and stuff. Or is it poison? I'm going to just bring this pawn here to see if they equalise or if they're pushing down. Okay, so they're going for the 20 pointer, which means our king can't get castled. But we don't have a problem with that, so we're okay with this. Could take this pawn, he takes it. Who's winning out in this move order? We could, hit, hit, we could hit their king, but we're baiting the pawn down. Or shall we just simply bring the knight out and support? I think this bishop will come to try and get rid of the knight, because the knight wants the pawn. Yeah, which it does do. And we can bring our bishop here, supporting the pawn. So if they do take, then at least we have support. But we can't get castled, so the only pawn that can protect us really is this one. So I think we will go here for our castling position. So I'm going to hit the bishop, see what it wants to do, because I think this knight is coming in to attack the knight yeah, in order to cause some damage. So I think what we'll do is get this bishop elevated and take the knight off the board if it comes there the pawn's going to take then we move the knight they're not actually doing that so we could bring this rook here just defending the bishop's area facing off the rook ready for the captures if anything i do believe oh okay fair enough they're going for damage towards our doubled pawns but that gives us access to actually start attacking here in the later stages so we're now hitting this end game quite nicely we know what's happening they're thinking about the knight coming here they're not doing that they're wanting to save the pawn so i'm going to hit the bishop with a small piece see what it wants to do 
Might even bring the king in here because there's nothing else really that can trouble it. Yep, so we're going to bring the king in. Make it an active king. I think they're still thinking about doing this, but now it's not. Is it as good? Knight comes in, we take, pawn takes, pawn takes. Or we just leave them, um, leave the bishop there. Okay, so they're not doing any of that. So a smaller piece attacking the higher piece, can't be wrong. Are we sending it to a good place though? Attacking the pawn here. I think we'll continue with the pawns attacking the knight. And we can take the knight off the board. I'm not too precious about having the two bishops because we do actually get a pawn as well. So we'll be plus one advancing our king up the board. But the idea for me is trying maybe to get the rooks doubled here. I'm not sure if we're going to get the time to do that because they're rushing to hit our king. Could just bring the king back or just bring it here so that we've got space for this pawn. I think that's what we'll do. Just bring the king back and start pushing this pawn if we get that time. Bishop could come here attacking the knight. Looking for the exchanges of the rooks. Only because our pawns are slightly more advanced up the board. So they're actually coming to actually take the... Um, and we wanted to push this pawn anyway. So I don't really see a problem with that. Do we take with the pawn or do we go for the rook exchange? Oh, he's not doing any of that. So we could move the bishop now. Attacking the pawn. Also x-raying through to the rook. Where is the knight planning to go? Maybe coming here to attack the pawn. And then when we push on it, then he comes here, puts a check on the king. And also this pawn as well. So that's probably something they're thinking of doing. Could beat them to the punch by pushing this pawn, but probably hitting the head of the snake. Going to beat them to the punch, but are we really? Because then he can come here with his knight attacking the bishop. Where else is he going from there? He's got all this access as well. Move the bishop. Attacks the pawn. Hit. Then he comes here. I'm not really a fan of that. I'm going to bring the bishop here and see what they do. If they do do that, we can do rectified actions, just moving the king or something. So he's come the other way, but he's attacking the pawn. And still, if we do that, we're dropping into that. So we may as well, well, in fact, you know, we do have a check on the king first, but we won't be owning the file after that. So I'm going to bring the king across, like we said, just to protect. I think they'll look for a double then. But we can push the pawn then. All right, so it's not doing that. So let's... Woo -hoo -hoo. Let's bring the rook up and see if we can get doubled. If they can't, then we're bringing our pawn back in line. So he is coming for this pawn after all. Is it a situation we need to concern ourselves with? Because the bishop does have a check on the king. Is it an important check? It's a check all the same, but it gives us space to move the pawn. But if we move the pawn, we lose the rook. Eesh. Wow. That nursery rhyme, isn't it? Swallow the spider to catch the fly. Something like that. So, check. Moves out the way. Take the... Oh, we take the knight off the board. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, ho. Discovered checker, Rudy. Let's go here. So, we get the knight off the board. Oh, that's pleasant to see. Okay, they're still carrying on, so it doesn't mean we've won anything. So, the bishop can come back now and defend the pawn. I think that's an appropriate manoeuvre, there's nothing else. So we'll just bring the bishop back and protect the pawn. He can't come and put a check on because he'll get taken. So we don't need to be too scared of that. We could bring this rook here. Obviously they win a pawn. Right. Um, could go down that route. We've got more material. 
So I'll tack one of the rooks, rook takes, pawn takes, rooks owning the file. We can bring our rook here looking to try and get in. I think we're going to go with that. Yep, let's just trade down. Yep, so they lose a rook. Bring this rook here. Get ready to start mobilizing. They will be trying to get our bishop out of the way, but I think we might be in time to hit their rook. Yep, we're going to hit the rook. Um, we could take the rook off the board now. I think that should be fairly okay for us now. Let's just bring this king here. I don't want to get too fancy, but it looks pretty straightforward. I mean, if they do a hit here, we've got space to move the bishop, so I'm not concerned about that. Let's do that. And shall we just move it maybe here, so then it's blocking any port forward motion. They'd have to do a double. So we'll take, again, don't want to be overconfident, but it does look fairly nice for us. We do have the two pawns. If he gets his king down here, down here, down here, that might be a cause for concern, maybe. So if we bring this pawn here just to block it. Yep. So if it goes there, then it's looking to take, then we can just take it off the board anyway. So I'm going to push this pawn in the meantime and see if we can get that promoted. So he's got a lot of things to think about now. So we can take, his king's going to come here probably ends up here and so we take his king takes our king's block not blocking our bishop is defending this pawn so where else is he going so let's take and they've resigned pretty smooth game let's have a look at analysis in this one i think the major change was that discovery with the bishop check getting the knight but let's have a look at the development there. So yes, they won the 20 points, which means our king can't get castled. That's in our world. It's not in anybody else's world. But you can make that work for yourself if you castle appropriately and make sure that you, your king is pretty safe. So I think they did everything okay, really, in this part. They were doing the targeting right, yeah. Captured, doubled the pawns, so weakness for us. And we're hitting the higher piece with a lesser piece. Taking with the king, I think, was better. Less destruction to the pawn structure. And then smaller piece attacking the knight. I'm looking for any dips just to see if there's anything we need to work on as well. Uh, so they were down a pawn then after that exchange. So we're aware that the king was going to be getting hit, so we didn't really want to lose tempo. But we wanted to push that f pawn anyway, and the knight obliged, but then it changed its mind and went back. And it doesn't like the bishop move. We were umming and iron about what to do in this position. Saying e5, it's saying push the pawn. Yeah. I probably was thinking in the back of my head, um, the head of the snake is just going to get hit anyway. And didn't want to lose the advantage of having those um, majority pawns. So we brought the bishop through. And we were aware that the knight was potentially coming to attack this pawn. And this is where we did a bit of calculation. Realised that the bishop could come and put a check on the king. And we're also going to get a discovered check and take the knight off the board. So that was where we gained the advantage. Did we keep the advantage? Felt like we did. We protected the pawn, and then we went for the exchange. Oh, it's, it is actually saying rook d4 as well. Excellent. Yep, because we've got more material. Pawn majority on the king side is looking fairly hefty. Queen side is that? Queen side. Yep. I think everything else is plain sailing. I just like to check the end games just because sometimes you can get a little bit overconfident with. I think that's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Yeah, pushing the pawn to stop it. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay, nice one. Okay, the next puzzle. This one, the players are, one is 2000 and the other is 2100. And the 2000 one is closer to 2100, so it's high high level play again, as you would assume. And this is a 10 minute rapid game. The rating is hidden as usual until we take some action on trying to find the solution. Find the best move for white. Okay, so this is end game stuff here. And taking the rook is not really going to help the case, but let's have a look at the tempo. Pawn takes. King has to come back. King has to come back. Their king comes to support the pawn. Come here. Pawn comes to support. Pawn takes. The king can't take. Hmm, might be something as simple as that. Takes. King pawn goes. King goes back. In end game, it's really hard, hard coming back with the king. Is he kind of giving them something? But maybe they come this way. But this pawn is going to be passed, so he's going to have to come this way, isn't it? Yeah, take. He's going to have to come this way to stop this pawn from going. Obviously, he takes first. Then we come down. Then he's there. Hmm. 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 There. Okay, let's say he doesn't do that and he thinks he's getting promoted there in here in there yeah i don't think they're fast enough to support the pawn so i think we can take the rook off the board because we do have a passer here and if he's trying to fly down and get these pawns he's going to be too late yeah best move again so it's the king moving here now yes <laughs> in game practice is working okay 10 and 0 oh, queen side pawn push but as we're also doing the pattern training pattern recognition puzzle training um, hoping to try and recognize our own patterns within these games a bit like the last game there uh, recognizing the discover check on the night type thing but don't me don't let it mess your game up trying to look for sort of tactics or you know that type of thing look positionally first and see how you get on I think the knight's going to jump into the center here not doing that is giving us the x-ray for to their queen so i'm going to develop our knight currently a move behind but usually are when you're playing black try and get the bishop out maybe there's a bishop exchange there's no rush at the moment try and find those better positions i think the simple bishop move is coming here as they're taking so long the woman and I are about the knight coming here or the knight coming here or sorry a smaller piece attacking the higher piece So as I'm, I'm not a fan of pattern training per se in the terms of utilizing the stuff that's online, um, I prefer doing the books and 
like I've mentioned before, if it's in fact the book is called 180 Ways to Checkmate a Grandmaster, and it's got like loads of um, you know, loads of uh, puzzles and patterns in there. And what I do is then put them onto so it's brought the bishop out. So I'm going to make space for our bishop. What I do is just put the pieces on the on the board and work out the calculations manually. <clears throat> so I I enjoy doing that, and I'm a little bit past halfway now. Uh, last time I was at halfway point, and I keep going back to the beginning again to and go through each of them. And I think I know them quite well. The patterns that have been put through all the way through to the um, past the halfway mark now. So there's no rush. I think I've had that book for many years, many, many years. And I'm only just past the halfway mark in terms of trying to make the pattern stick in my head. So it goes to show I'm consistent with what I say. This is the slow, 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 slow development in chess. There's no rush because I want to enjoy and understand what it is that I'm learning as I'm going through with my chess. Because as we know, there's no one answer to the game of chess. It's the enjoyment and the journey and the experience that can help me enjoy my development in chess. I'm tempting to do this. I'm going to do it. The pawn is going to be on the knight, so the knight's going to have a bit of a panic and we'll get the bishop off because the queen is going to take that type of thing. Yep, okay. And the knight does move, so we'll take, and then the queen takes back. It does mess our pawn here, but I'm not too precious about that. Knight is looking for this square, which it would do. Yep. So we can move the queen out of the way, or we can just let it come and ride the game out. Which is better? I'm looking to see how I can get his queen off the board now. So we can move the queen up. Can't attack the queen there because there's no support at the minute. Let's see. Chomping at the bit. Can't stop it. What shall we do? Just protect the pawn. Let the knight come like we said. Now it's going to be jumping here, here, here. I think we're going to do that. Let's just protect the pawn. Wait for the knight to come dancing. Not doing that just yet. It's hitting the head of the snake. So we may as well let the head of the snake go. Because that was the pawn that was kind of weak for us. And we do have hitting this pawn. But he does have this knight coming here. We'd have to move the queen up. I think that's probably what's going to happen. Also, he's going to be looking to double on the pawn, but we do have a smaller piece being able to protect. Let's just hit this pawn. We want to try and get these pawns mash, mashed up. But as we said, the knight's coming here. Move the queen up. Does this pawn drop? Takes. No, it's not doing any of that. So we're not going for a queen exchange. I did think it was a queen exchange for a brief second. So we could go with the knight. Or well, we can move the queen. Even if we move the queen here, his knight still does have this. If we take with the knight, we're on his rook, so it gives them something to think about. Momentarily stalling the knight coming here. They might not have seen that, and that's why they've not done that. But we'll wait and see. The rook's down. He's looking to basically get the rook here, isn't he? So we could bring the rook here, looking to see if there's an exchange going. Or we could just hit the queen now and see if there's anything happening. But let's just hit the queen now and see if he's exchanging. It's like keeping small, tiny pressure going. Not letting them get rested. Well, we're, we're allowed to do that at this moment in time because the opponent's position we don't want to over egg the situation. Looks like they're not going to be taking. So are they just going to come here and put two on here? Like we said, we do have the smaller piece that can defend. Maybe they're coming here, but I don't think they'll do that because the knight can take. 
So the rook has come and defended. Does that look different to us now then? I think we're simply taking out. Simply taking and maybe bringing the rook here onto the knight. But then he's doubling. But like we said, we do have the small piece that can defend. It would be lovely if they did go there because our knight would be able to get a fork. So let's go and attack their knight. Hoping that they go here to look to attack here. Small developments, we can still go here and attack their rook and attack the pawn at the same time. Is that helping us? Yeah, okay, let's do it. It's again keeping some sort of pressure on the opponent, giving them things to think about. Trying to improve our position. Don't want to get the knight trapped. Does have a bit of an out if we can come here. And whoa, he's attacking a pawn. Which makes sense. So we can defend. Push the pawn. Is he trying to save this pawn? Oh, he's going to have time to save the pawn, isn't he? Yeah, because we push this. Then he just pushes this down or here or whatever. Pushes that down. We can attack the rook. Maybe comes back. We could take his knight off the board. He takes our knight off the board. We're owning the file, which is a plus. That might feels like it might work, just that he might not go and attack the rook. Might just move to the side, which is the positive one. We take, he takes. And then we don't have anything else after that, so we're pushing here. Yeah, right. I think we'll just push the pawn. Four minutes we're on. It's not a long play game. But they do move the pawn, so I'm going to attack the rook like we said. And see if they do drop back or not. He does have this rook situation here, doesn't he? No, he's keeping... Keeping tabs on his knight. His rook could come there. So if we push this pawn to stop that. Or we could just attack the rook again. Don't want the knight being trapped for some strange convoluted reason. Let's hit the rook. Not seeing anything clear on there. It's probably saying it's not a draw. I'm going to move now. Jump here and attack the rook. Where does the rook go? Comes here. Take it. Attack the rook. We're attacking the knight. Hoping they're thinking, I should have gone for a draw now. Comes here, is attacking this pawn. But he's getting a pawn, we get a knight. That might be a better exchange for us. Oh, take the rook. Take the rook, put a check on the king, double the rook, oh no, maybe not. So he's going to get arty with his knight, isn't he? So do we support this pawn first? Before we start jumping, putting checks on the king. So we're not winning, I mean we've got plus two, but knight and the rook can still work quite nicely. So we put hit. And then he hits the rook. Gives us time to put a check on the king. Or even attack the knight. Let's leave the king alone. Let's attack the knight. Oh, but he's going to that position. He's going to stop us. But if he does that, we can hit the knight. Yep, yeah, alright. No for Oh, he does have a hit on my king. Hmm. Let's have a hit on my king. So if we go and put a check on the king then. Yeah, we go there, he puts a check on the king and he's dancing around. Put the check first. And 
I think I'm moving the king. Oh no, maybe not because he can push down and we can't take. I moved the rook. Move the rook here. Just trying to stop that, but he's going to go there with the knight. Stopping this. I've only got two minutes left now. Might be losing on time. It looks a bit too intricate. Yes, he's gone there. So if we attack the knight, he goes back and attacks the rook. Bring the could attack it. He comes down, comes across, round there, uh, and it's going to come to that middle bit that we talked about. Okay, let's go there. It's going to go there. Yeah, so we're going to go here. We're looking to try and do this, but it's going to move. Where is he moving to? And let's hit the knight now. King's getting a little bit too active. Okay, so this is now. Let's hit some pawns. Getting too close to our king, isn't he? Don't want a secret stealth checkmate. Really coming in. Dude, he's coming in. Take this. X-ray through to the king. Oh, shh. Nope, nope. Not yet, not yet. Oh, sha! Let's have a look. Captures. Position. The rook's in the center of the board. Rooks are totally in the center of the board. It's not good thing for them but they could have gone for a draw there so I was playing for the draw so I feel fairly comfortable I think they probably 1400 1450 yeah because that was a, a bit of a mistake there I'll put it at 1450 because it was it was testy I think they played well. Nice one. This one is... Oh, this is a little bit... These are 1600s. One of them's nearer the 1700 mark. And it's a 3 plus 2 blitz game. And the rating is hidden as usual. Waiting for us to try and find the solution. Find the best move for white. Best move for white. Let's have a look. King, king, king. Doesn't look like there's anything that's remotely close to getting the king. Is this about getting material? Got a next ray through to our queen. Bishop looks a little bit jammed in there. Doesn't look like it can go anywhere. If this knight came and attacked the bishop, what's he actually going to do? Suppose he'll attack the bishop. I don't think it's that forcing, but they're going to keep that in the back pocket because that can't move anywhere. If they pushed. Yeah, so there's if, buts, and maybes there. It's not forced, really. And, okay, rook coming. That doesn't look like it's doing anything. What's the bishop doing? White square bishop. Needs to move really, it's going to get hit, spoiling the tempo. That's nothing meaty. Small pawn push, we'd lose the queen. I can't see anything immediately other than going and attacking the bishop. So we go and attack the bishop, like we said, he's not got anywhere to go, but they do attack our bishop. So what's the scores on the dolls there? Because the bishop's going nowhere, so that will get taken. It's the... We take and take and queen takes. So two pawns for the bishop. But then they've got this pawn here. 
that doesn't look like the sort of puzzle thing you'd expect to see really doing that type of maneuver what else is there then what else is there see this lower rated one 1600 is causing me more headache than those um 2025 2500 games so i must be overthinking this game Mm hmm that's the simple but they do have this so then if we did take as we're getting that for free they're taking but they're not getting it for free but we're getting a pawn hmm that doesn't look good does it doesn't look good. There must be something else after that. Right, okay, there. They push. Continue to take. They continue to take. The knight is here. Is there any follow ons at all from the knight being here? They've taken the bishop. I can't see it. I, I genuinely can't see it there. Hmm. This looks like one I'm going to have to look at the solution on because I can't. Okay, shake it off, shake it off. Right, it's definitely for white, isn't it? Yeah. Attack. They attack, which would make sense. Is there a case of the missing piece? It's not really, is it? We take, we've got the bishop. They take, they've got our bishop. We take, we've got a pawn. So it's just a case of being a pawn up, isn't it? Surely that can't be it. Maybe there's maybe the computer's thinking, well, it's a material gain thing. Doesn't look like an awesome puzzle, does it? I suppose gaining any type of material is a plus, isn't it? Seems a strange way of going about it. I'm plumping for that because I can't see anything else. It's definitely not pushing there because the bishop just takes the queen. We don't have any threats on their queen or their king that I can see. So I do believe it's that. So I'm going to go with this. But they haven't done that at all. They're attacking our queen, a higher piece. So we get this piece for free because the bishop just takes and that pawn is going to be on the knight, isn't it? So we take... Oh my god, they're not doing anything we've, we're saying. They're on our queen, so we'll get the pawn then, won't we? So we take the bishop, pawn takes, and we get the pawn. And we will have a minor piece up out of that. Wow. And the rating for this is 1330. Crikey. Well... In my defense, we did see that attack right at the very start, you know, the knight attacking. It was just the continuation after that. I just didn't see it. And no way did they actually attack the bishop. All right. Okay. It just shows you the convoluted ways of puzzles. It does help, I suppose, in a way, you know, improve the way that you can think. But if you don't play that way... Sometimes it's really hard to get an understanding of what they're trying to tell you. As we've mentioned, this is a 1600 game, which is not like the 2000s or the 2500s, but the rating for this is still only 1300. There's a theme kind of running through 
the whole of these exercises that we've been doing so far with the recent pattern training and that is anybody at 1300 1400 1500 whatever yeah can see these types of tactics so when you're playing somebody who is higher rated than you rest assured that you are able to see these types of pattern recognitions doesn't mean you're using an engine or anything like that when they come back and go how did you see that we're showing you now from the recent experiences that we've had i'll put a link to the previous ones that we've done as well where we've done pattern training mixed in with them which mixed in with the games and those examples have shown that the higher rated players are not doing anything fantastical there's no there's no um 2000 rated puzzle that we've come across within our experience recently there are you know there are puzzles that do have those so don't get me wrong but for our experience the higher rated players that we've been seeing in these puzzles and i have no control over these puzzles uh, i'm just playing them as you see them and obviously the system is generating a rating for these types of puzzles and the ratings have been round about the 1300 1400 area there's no magic or mystery to it there's only magic or mystery if the person is using a higher a higher tool of some sort external to their brain other than that it is possible for lower rated players to actually find beautiful pattern recognition positions on the board against much higher rated players 10 and 0 let's uh, attack the palm okay let's um, start again attack the palm let's hit the center like we do Capture, capture, let's develop the bishop, attack in the knight, take the knight, and let's castle, attempting to chase it around but if we did go there we just takes the pawn down here, let's develop the knight, Get the queen. Now, now we can go because the knight's blocking that attack. Take the queen. Bishop's on the pawn. Develop the bishop. I'm going to bring it on the outside of the pawns rather than targeting this pawn here. There's method in the madness. So now we're going to double protect the pawn. looking to double our pawns now so we're going to bring the bishop back just supporting the knight he has gone for the double double and i think i can just continue with developing the rook This type of end game now okay they have captured and are we losing some sort of tempo and they're not giving it up so they've actually gained a pawn haven't they from doing that yeah they gained a pawn from doing that i'm going to bring the rook here just protecting the pawn briefly so that's the type of pattern stuff that you'd see in you know we've just done one where we've seen that type of um, continuation it looks like nothing but they gain a pawn and it's in the end game now so it's quite crucial but they have to play really precise so we're going to try and own the file but they've gone there so that they can actually go and exchange the rooks off so we're down a pawn i'm going to go for the exchange He didn't need to bring his king there obviously but he's done that so let's push these pawns up and 
let's just keep pushing these pawns up gonna have to try and treat these this bishop as a type of yeah so now they've decided but we could use that to our benefit by just bringing the king here get the king elevated let's take and do we now act this as a pawn our king move this bishop out of the way would be nice to push this pawn here but the head of the snake is just going to get taken let's push it anyway bit of a bad square really isn't it because it's on a white square he does have a white square bishop but they're going to be mobilizing their pawn majority push that move I was going to do there All right so let's push now he's pushing down stopping that damn alright so let's keep this bishop acting it as a pawn see if it works for us don't think we're going to get through so I'm going to have to bring my king across but they see everything look at operation oh and that was always going to happen wasn't it let's just hit this pawn yeah just taking all the pawns off on that side let's just take this there might be enough destruction for us yeah it's not wearing that not wearing that let's hit this pawn Kings on a white square, very dangerous. Bishop can't quite get in just yet. And oh, he's getting in now. Getting in now. We could do this. Check. Can't go there. So I'm going to put the check on. Push the pawn. And then his king just comes down and causes trouble. Take. Push. Doesn't. Bishop's going to be. Yeah, straight away. Same move. Okay. Right, so. I don't think there's a right lot we can do about this situation. Let's move the king. King comes here attacking the bishop and we can push the pawn not interested let's push now he's stopping our king from jumping in anywhere <laughs> unless he's going to get hit now okay he's not doing that so this pawn is just going to go ramping down isn't it okay let's do oops excuse me hit the bishop push oh no 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 that's wrong that's wrong that's wrong yeah it's gonna yeah something was wrong with that but then they gave the bishop up supporting so maybe it's right for us now maybe we're fast enough but his promotion does go right and hit me right in the face he goes one, we go one, he goes one, we get a queen, he goes one, he gets a queen, but he's in my face, so he's winning tempo-wise, and his queen can just be putting checks on us. Yeah, so it's not worked out the best, really. They're doing the count now. One. 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 Yay, we get a queen, but... So what? Check. Where does my king go? Just getting checks on and it's going to push these down. Might even get my... Oh no, the bishop's guarding. What am I on about? What am I talking about? Yeah, okay. It's an advantage. It looks like we have gained an advantage after all of that. Yeah, missing stuff. A 
like those games where you j I just don't know that I'm actually winning <laughs> and then they find out that we are actually winning um, and it's not through anything that we think we have done it's just because the position on the board has ended up that way yeah I think that was wrong because I don't think they needed to push that pawn hold on they could have just brought their bishop here couldn't they and blocked it I suppose we will chase it about a bit Or maybe they could have just supported here. Why did I say it was wrong? Because I was thinking he could just do this. Push the pawn. They didn't need... Yeah, pushing this one I think was wrong. Oh, but what are you on about, dude? You've got the bishop protecting. Why do I keep forgetting that that bishop's there? Seriously, why do I keep forgetting that that bishop's there? But there's no concern. So either way, yeah, we might have been... Advantageous. Maybe the king should have come and supported the bishop. That might have been better. But our bishop is still protecting this, but if they got the two linked pawns. Let's break that down again. If the king comes here and we're pushing, we can't take the bishop now. And then he pushes the pawn. Then we push this pawn. Oh yeah, they've got issues, haven't they? Yeah, they've got issues. They've got two pawns to contend with. So the king then comes back. Then we'd be taking this pawn. Bishop. Then he pushes. Yeah, we'd be getting queened all over the place. Right, so that didn't work. So it looks like they've done a kind of rage quit thing type thing here. Because they're not making a move. And they basically resigned the game, leaving the time to run out. I'm going to have a look at the analysis. I think this was the one that um, did the bishop thing. All right, knight takes, bishop takes, sorry. Oh, it was the rook. Yeah, so the rook grabbed the pawn gave them plus one and as we we did our own calculation throughout the game mentioning the all majority on this side and we were basically focused on making the bishop or the king act as an extra pawn in terms of the position on the board let's see how impactful that thinking was so I started to push these pawns up and that was a massive dip there it's, um, bishop f3 is attacking the rook and attacking the pawn so he would have got a pawn there would have got a pawn there if he'd have come here although we could have gone here but would that not have been any good for some strange reason let's have a look oh we can't go there because the bishop's protecting <laughs> right yeah so we would have lost the pawn there if they had done that which they didn't interesting interesting yeah very good and then they went for the exchange, brought the king up. So they had a winning position, but they didn't take advantage of that. And we're just pushing pawns. Doesn't really like that pawn push, saying bishop e3. Or oh, king e3, sorry. Okay, so that's all right. Now the king's acting as a pawn, just bouncing up and down. So they do get the pawn. So they're basically winning throughout the, you know, the back half of this game. So we now we decide to push up, just grab, and we're yeah, they're minus four point something. So really, we don't really stand a chance in this game. But we didn't give up, and we're looking to try and improve our position. Doesn't like that pawn move. I was, I thought that was pretty nifty. And they attacked we put the check on the king you know i thought it might have gone a little bit higher for us i thought that was really quite nifty as well but it's not saying king d7 which it does it's saying that said take the 
Is it still thinking? Ah, it, you know, yeah, it said take the G6. Nope. I'm happy with that because it's given them something to think about, a past pawn. And we take, seeing if we can get another past pawn. So that's two past pawns they've got to contend with. And then at this point here, I did think, well, we're kind of lost. Yeah, look at that step, minus six now. And that's not the move. That's not the move. King f5. Also, they should have shown a bit of patience attacking this here, but... Oh, yeah, because the bishop's actually protecting that square. As we mentioned, oh, it could just go up and up, but now the bishop's protecting that square. And it's also protecting this square. Ooh. So, very nice that the opponent made a duff move, but then we made a duff move because we could have just taken it off the board. <laughs> Could have just taken the bishop off the board. Just looking at it now, the computer. Oh dear me! Just take it off the board. <laughs> oh, don't you love Jess? Yep. Okay. So in the game, I didn't see that. I'm so focused on trying to get my pawn up. That's a free piece right in front of my face. Alright, and they push down and at that point then we still didn't take the bishop. <laughs> oh my dear, so focused on pushing the pawn. Oh look at that. They say bishop a8. Uh, we, we, we did mention that a8 and then they pushed and we get a third stab at it and we eventually see it. <laughs> That's human chess for you. Mistakes will be made, won't they? <laughs> and sometimes you play the perfect game as well. So we as humans, we can't beat ourselves up for playing perfect games. And um, we, we can beat ourselves up for playing games that <laughs> we know we could have done better. Or, But looking at this game here, I felt like I'd done the right moves, um, which were appropriate for our position. The opponent didn't take advantage of that so at the end of the day if the opponent hasn't seen it we're going to take advantage of it eventually at some point <laughs>